Hi guys, this is step two of me healing and living with a hiatus hernia. As I mentioned, I'm going to lay out all the steps of how I managed to heal myself naturally, how I don't get reflux anymore, and how I definitely don't take any medication to deal with reflux, hiatus hernia, GERD, constipation, or anything related. This video is also relevant to anyone that's dealing with stress, anxiety, or panic, and they just want some natural help in that direction. So step one of the hiatus hernia journey, I'll put a link up in the corner. That's quite an important step. If you can take a moment, if you haven't already watched it, just go and have a look at it. It's quite important to know what a hiatus hernia is. I lay out um, how it physically is a problem and the steps you can take to try and bring your stomach back down into your abdomen so that it's not sitting squashed up between your lungs and your diaphragm. It's an important step because step two is us now working on that diaphragm. Um, so you kind of need to do step one if you can before you start step two. So you breathe completely automatically without having to worry about it. Your body does this through the autonomic nervous system or ANS for short. So while you're watching TV or talking or eating, you don't have to worry about how you were breathing. It's always happening in the background. Or you can intentionally breathe. You get to choose how you want to breathe in, how long you want to hold your breath for, and how you want to breathe out. So you can also intentionally breathe. This is the only system in the human body where you can choose to do it one of two ways, automatically or intentionally. Nothing else works that way. So why is this important? When you're stressed, you will breathe short, shallow, rapid breaths. So what this looks like is, so you can see how the clavicles and the throat engage here and the top of the chest, and that's about it, okay? That is short, shallow, rapid breathing. You cannot be relaxed and calm and breathe short, shallow, rapid breaths. They don't go together. So the opposite is also true. It's very unlikely that you'll be stressed out and anxious while breathing long, controlled, deep breaths. It just doesn't work that way. So, if we could train ourselves to breathe in a more optimal way by doing these long controlled breaths, we can train our body to remember how to do this and then it just becomes muscle memory and it has a ripple effect on us for the rest of the day. So all it takes is 10 minutes of breath work every morning for this muscle memory to kick in and for your body to remember how to breathe and I know it might sound silly you know I know how to breathe but in the moment when you're stressed you're not even aware that your breathing patterns are changing in fact if you could have self-awareness and stop yourself in a moment of stress and really analyze how you're breathing you will probably notice that your breathing is quicker it's more often and you're probably breathing out your mouth whereas normally when you relax your breathing is calm and slow and you normally breathe out your nose so we want to train ourselves to do deep breaths so that throughout the day our body can go oh no no i'm not going to do short shallow rapid breaths i'm going to choose to breathe in this more controlled way so when we're breathing short shallow rapid breaths we're also activating our sympathetic nervous system our SNS. This is also known as the fight and flight response. When we choose to breathe slowly and calmly and deeply, it's a completely separate part of our ANS that's activated. This is called the parasympathetic nervous system or the PNS. And the PNS is your rest and digest system. When that is activated, your body has been given the signals that you are relaxed everything is fine, you are safe, I am relaxed, and you're allowing your body to release blood that can then flow down into your digestive system 
and help you digest your food. If you are in a state of fear and chaos and panic, you are not going to be digesting your food because your body is saying, no, we need to fight or fly or get away from something. We can't have the time to be worrying and digesting food. We're going to put that on hold and we'll come to it later. But the problem is we don't always come to it later and we don't digest our food properly. Then we have a whole lot of stomach acid that just bubbles up and that's reflux. So for someone that is suffering with a hiatus hernia, by doing deep breathing exercises and reminding your body and activating your PNS, you'll be able to digest your food properly. You won't be as stressed. You'll be out of fight and flight. So that's a huge thing for hiatus hernia. The other positive for hiatus hernia sufferers is that when you do deep breathing exercises, you're also activating and strengthening your diaphragm muscle. So a few words on your diaphragm muscle. Let's get into that. Your diaphragm sits like this, just where your chest is here, where your ribs end. It sits like a dome muscle like this. When you do deep belly breathing, you breathe in and your belly breathe, uh, moves out. So, and as that happens, your diaphragm flattens and moves down like this, which means you can see there's a lot more space for your lungs. That forms a vacuum and air is able to draw in into your lungs. When you breathe back out, your diaphragm goes back into that dome shape. Breathing in again, diaphragm flattens, breathing out, diaphragm goes back into the dome. Short, shallow, rapid breaths, this doesn't happen. So you'll have all of this, this stays where it is and it's not activated. So you need to start picturing your diaphragm as a muscle that you are working out because if this muscle gets stronger, your stomach will stay in the abdomen. It won't keep moving back up into your chest area. And then you won't have to worry about step one and bringing your stomach back down to where it needs to go. So if you're watching this video and you like, Step two is not for me. I'm going to come back at step three. I'm going to give this one a miss. I strongly urge you not to think that way. Step one, I don't do any more. I did it for the first few months. Step two, this diaphragmatic breathing is a part of my life. It is something I try and do every morning for between five and 10 minutes. If I'm really rushed and I, I forget to do it, I'll do it in the car while I'm driving. And the point is, it's a repetitive exercise that you have to keep doing to remind your body about the state you want to be in. So it is without a doubt the most important step in my healing of my hiatus hernia and my reflux. I can't stress it enough that this is the most important thing you should do. So let's get into the actual technique of how you do belly breathing. Um, you get a lot of different breath, breath work techniques. You get the box breathing, which is to help you with energy and creativity. But for the purposes of today and this video, we're doing a calming breath work and we're doing the four, seven, eight technique. So what that is, it's breathing in for a count of four, holding for a count of seven, and then breathing out for a count of eight. I strongly advise that you use an app if you're doing this, especially in the beginning because the app will prompt you when you need to breathe in, when you need to hold, and when you need to breathe out, so that you're not having to worry about your belly, the movements, and also the timing of the breath. Use an app. There are so many free apps you can use. I use Calm, and I'm sure if you just type in on an app store, Breathwork, you will find a load of apps that will give you free access to 478 breathing technique. So on my phone, you'll see the Calm app. Click on that. And then you scroll down and to the right, you'll see an icon called Mindful Tools. Click, click on that. And when it opens, you'll see the breathing exercises at the top. Scroll to the right until you find the blue one called Unwind. Click on that one. So there you can see Release Tension and Calm Your Mind. Breathing Technique 478. Click the Start button. Mm -hmm. 
So you can hear there's different chime noises for when you breathe in, when you hold, and when you exhale. So you can have this app in the background while you are breathing. If you tap on the screen, you'll see a menu go into that. You can change the volume of your background. You can change the volume of the chimes. And you can change how many times you want to breathe per minute. So ideally in the beginning, start with four breaths per minute because you don't want to feel like you're holding your breath for ages. And obviously the better you get at it, you can go from four breaths per minute to three breaths to two breaths. Um, this is currently set at two breaths per minute. You can see how long it's taking to complete one cycle. And over here you can see I'm doing the breathing technique. As I breathe in through my nose, I'm pushing my belly up and the book is clearly seen moving upwards. There you can see me breathing out and pulling my stomach back in. And breathing in again, you'll see the belly rise. And if you can, breathe in through your nose and ideally breathing out is done through your mouth. Here's another option, instead of lying down, you can breathe in and out while you're sitting. Um, I just find for beginners it's much easier to do it lying down. But there you can see um, I'm breathing out now, so the stomach's going in. And then with a big breath in, you'll see the stomach get large. That's breathing in, it's holding. And that's breathing out. So I have a challenge for you guys. I would love for you to look in the comments and see that I've put a link that will just take you to a form that you just have to put your name and you can choose to give your email address or phone number. And the form is called I am starting my 30 day breathwork challenge. Start the challenge as soon as you've watched this and incorporate this breathing technique for five to 10 minutes every morning. And I will check in with you in 30 days via email or WhatsApp. And I will check in with you and see how you're doing. And I am almost positive that if you do it for 30 days every morning, amazing things are going to happen for you. And guys, it is so important that we become self-aware. And what that means is that you have more of an understanding of your body and how it works and you hone in to the sensations that you're feeling and um, changes in your breathing, changes in your mood, changes in um, noticing the start of reflux. Because if you become self-aware, you can change it. The second you notice that your breathing is changing for the worse or you're starting to breathe up here, rapid breathing, you will then have the power in that moment to change it. To say, nope, we are not doing that. Five to 10 minutes of deep breathing and you'll be okay. You can completely get out of a state that you would have caused, which would take you down a horrible road. So for someone suffering with anxiety um, that has taken a tranquilizer and they felt how that relaxes them so much, um, this would be amazing for you to try because if you do this and you keep doing it and you start to notice that by doing breath work, you can take control of your life and you're not getting as anxious, you no longer require a pull to help with your stress. You're no longer giving a little pull all that power in saying that I cannot take control of my life. I need that pull. The control is now within you and you alone and there is nothing more powerful than the feeling of knowing that you have control over yourself and you can heal yourself and you do not require a little pull to do so.